The Cube at IBM Impact 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsor IBM. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Paul Gillen. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is day two live coverage of IBM Impact. We're live in Las Vegas to cover all the action. This is theCUBE, it's our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Paul Gillen, SiliconANGLE. And our next guest is Meg Swanson, director of Blue Mix Marketing at IBM. Back on, CUBE alumni, recently hot off the Pulse tour. We were uh, broadcasting live, welcome back. Thank you, it's good to be here. Um, we had such a great conversation because Blue Mix was the big launch yes. at Pulse. Now it's impact to the customer. Right. Um, so I got to ask you, uh, you know, you feel pretty good about Blue Mix right now? I mean, coming out, of, you know, a lot of re registrations on, on the launch. Right. Okay, let's get to the reality now. Where are we at? <laughs> yeah, so we've had, it's hard to believe that Pulse was just a few weeks ago, right? And we had just launched it, we were getting so many registrations in on the beta. So we've had three you know, big things from a momentum standpoint with Blue Mix. So one has just been the sheer signups and registrations, and then immediately seeing the real-time analytics on the applications that are being built. And the second thing that's been huge for us is the ecosystem. So you saw Square on stage today, we launched with Twilio at Pulse, and just having this entire ecosystem of, uh, of organizations come through, and then the rapidity at which we're able to add the services. So um, it was, we were announcing you know, 30 services here, and we're just every single week. It's you know, agile, we're continuous delivery, so we're adding more and more services. And, uh, and I don't think at Pulse, we thought we would be at as fast a clip level as we are now. You know, IBM, was, we were commenting yesterday about you know, how you guys have such muscle, and it's, it's not about if IBM can do it, it's right. if they decide to do something, they get behind it, right. they have the war chest of technology to pull from, right. as well as now you have now more of an open model with developers. So, you know, that's the challenge. So the, the question I ask you is, are you guys still in the, hi, we're blue mix, we're number two and trying harder kind of mentality? Or are you guys don't even ignore that, you're just going to go straight ahead and just keep on building? Yeah, I think you know, going in, it's really not been the number two. It's been about <laughs> figuring out developers and then designing a platform for them. So when you look at, you know, what Phil Gilbert, who leads our design team, and Damien Heredia, is really looking at how developers are using development platforms today. And how can we pre-package services how can we offer the open source, you know, the third party all together, and around areas like, you know, we were talking earlier, the big data analytics, the mobile services, you know, even bringing in Watson services. So it's really been about understanding the behavior and continuing to in the beta and designing for that. But, um, quick, quick update, what's been announced? So what's, so what's new with Pulse? Before we get into some of the questions, have you guys announced anything new? Elastic, uh, auto scaling you mentioned? Mm -hmm, Is that yeah. new announcement? So give us the update on what's new. Yeah, so new, new announcements for Impact. So we have the uh, application auto scaling. So what we found is obviously as you're building out a mobile application and then you start getting your users, you have to scale up and that can't be a manual process in today's day and age. It has to be you know, an automatic process, so that is a new service. Uh, launching a lot of more DevOps capabilities. So how do we go across the entire developer life cycle around you know, testing, remediation, and you saw some of that um, on main stage here around our mobile quality assurance and, uh, and techniques there. Definitely you know, big push around big data and some of the new uh, projects that we're rolling out there. And uh, also in cloud integration, so as we look at uh, working with our clients as they're building out mobile apps, they have to tie back to their back end systems. So they have to tie back to you know, their CRM systems, so integration, cloud integration, automatically scaling those apps. Those are a lot of the services that we're excited to, uh, to be announcing and, and continuing to roll out on a weekly basis. Hey, you know, IBM has a huge base of WebSphere customers. Yes. What kind of questions are you getting from them about Bluemix? Um, it's really been rapid adoption. So that's what's so exciting about this conference is as we've had the WebSphere Base, you know, obviously huge mobile play, and you saw um, on stage we had IQ, which is one of our startups with the Global Entrepreneur Program. And what IQ does is they take uh, the online retail experience. How when I log into a website, it recognizes me and it serves up personalized content. They bring that in the store to a physical location where it recognizes your face and, and traffic from your phone, and it'll start serving up customized data. So you think about the webs for users who have built mobile applications for those online retailers. Now, huge opportunity with a disruptor like IQ, who now they can build those applications for in-store and take a lot of what they've been doing on the web for physical locations. And we're seeing a lot of you know, great startups and companies that are 
you know, allowing even the web for user base to expand on in a, in a more traditional environment. You led with Square yesterday as a, as a reference platform. What, what kind of effort do you have underway to recruit these kind of new age, you know, born in the cloud yeah. companies to, to endorse Bluemix? Yeah, and it's just the partnership. So um, it's just been really incredible to see as we look across the span of what developers are looking to use. They need mobile payment, they need a communication. So how do you extend the mobile app beyond your IBM services? And as we ask clients, we ask them, what are you using? What do you want to use? What companies are you with? Obviously Twilio and Square came up um, as you know, loud and clear as companies we want to work with. We have a broad ecosystem as IBM where we have relationships with these companies and so it's a natural fit to pull them into the platform, co-launch um, you know, campaigns together and, uh, and really extend out the services that we have uh, to the startup with, with companies that are coming more from the startup community. Meg, one of the things I want to ask you is Dave Vellante is actually in San Francisco right now at another cube we're doing simultaneous with ServiceNow and he's interviewing the investor, uh, Doug Leone from Sequoia Capital and, and one of the hot conversations, and, he, and he, I asked him to ask a specific question which I'm going to ask you is, uh, in the startup community, there's a big focus on consumer obviously with all the big WhatsApp, which, right. which was on SoftLayer, which we documented, but now, that bubble's kind of popping, if you will. I won't say popping, but you can see that there's only a few winners, but there's still a lot of development going on, DevOps, mm -hmm. yep. a lot of enterprise focus. So the question we're going to ask Doug Leone is, uh, and we asked Steve Mills yesterday too, is what's different about enterprise startups? Meaning, it's just a little bit of a different mix. There's certain right. little things like audit, compliance. I mean, I mean, DevOps is all about not knowing about stuff and picking, letting it automate away like network infrastructure right. and storage. What are you guys doing with enterprise specific um, developers? And what's that, and, and, and talk about the difference between a developer who says, hey, I, I understand the consumer's agent trend, but I don't want to be just a consumer app. Right. I want to be consumer and business right. for social business, cloud business, whatever you want to call it, cloud first, mobile first, data first. Uh, how, what, what does Bluemix do that's different yeah. for those enterprise companies? Yeah, for the large enterprises, when we meet with them, a lot of what they see with the consumerization of IT is speed, right? So when we sit down with them, they'll say, I have four developers today that can build at that pace and rate that we see from the consumer IT. I have 40,000 developers on staff, so help me get from these four rock stars who can do this and scale your application building and the speed you need across these large organizations. So that's where Bluemix comes in, is you know, repackaging the services, making the app development easier, but then to your point, making sure we have the security, we have the DevOps, we have the remediation, and if you're a CIO of one of these large enterprises, you have to be able to see across your entire organization, every mobile app, you know, how they're trending, you know, how everything's doing, and get that visibility through. You know, we were talking yesterday also about data scientists, and, and, and this kind of brings up the DevOps question, because DevOps are perceived as very difficult positions. Like, uh, DevOps guys are those unique Navy SEALs, the, the, the unicorns, the black swans, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> But, you know, because of the Facebooks of the world, these guys, these guys were heavy hitters. But now in an organization, not everyone can be a DevOps guy, like a data scientist. So the answer was on the data science side is that there will be no shortage of data scientists because automation and tooling right, right. will abstract away the complexity. So the question to you is, how do you turn those four DevOps guys or one DevOps guy in an organization and enable others to be DevOps guys or gals in the sense of new automation? Because not everyone can be super DevOps, right. Superman. Right. But in a way, the automation piece. So talk about what you guys are doing around that particular um, uh, area of automation and, and yeah, ease I mean, of use. Yeah, and, and it goes back to, I mean, we have our you know, broad rational portfolio and, uh, and just it, it, a real focus on the developer life cycle, right? Within IBM products and then third parties that we partner with. So it's really about packaging, you know, how you do with the, the entire um, developer life cycle. And then to your point, all the data that's coming in. So you have you know, the Internet of Things, the wearables, you have just the proliferation of data. So how do we create services that, you know, we'll watch that on a time series, we'll watch that you know, from a geospatial standpoint, so the developers can pull in all that data in an easy way to develop their application. So we're looking more at what's the problem you're trying to solve, how do we prepackage and build services that you can pull into your mobile application to you know, extend, get insights out of that data, solve the problems, and then you know, remediate and, and ensure that you know, the app's going to... But is that part of the, the guiding future? principles of the team to basically make it easier? I mean, what, and what things are you doing to make it easier? What specific features? Yeah, so it's, uh, when you look at a lot of the platforms out today, um, the, the benefit of them is the breadth of services, right? The downside is the breadth of services. So we talk to a lot of startups and they say, 
you know, we, we really you know, want to go build a mobile app, but we've got you know, 12 different offerings to choose from. We don't know which companies are the best. So we've really built in you know, taking a look at the different services, certifying them, pre-packaging them into, into bundles where you could have, uh, if you're looking to you know, perform in a, you know, a big data analytics sort of way, if you're looking to perform um, you know, around any of our other areas, we've pre-packaged and bundled and tested the services. So we offer that kind of ease of, of app development for the developer, which takes you from the four to the 40,000. We were talking yesterday about work light and how, uh, and how that, that's your, your big play in the mobile market. How are you dovetailing your work with, uh, with Bluemix with the work light platform? Yeah, and the team works extremely closely together. So uh, you saw Mike Gilfix on stage yesterday from the mobile team come out and do the demo of Bluefix. It's seamless. So that's the you know, fabulous thing about Bluemix with an IBM is that we have the data team, the work light team, the mobile team all working together. So you know, we're constantly looking at what services do we have you know, traditionally as IBM that we can pull through through Bluemix. What's the value add? Is there customization that we do to serve it up to the end client? So the teams are working very closely together on a, an hourly basis. <laughs> Checks on the weekends. I mean, it's uh, so you know, if, a lot if of I buy, integration. If I buy work light services, what do I get? What aspect of Bluemix do I get? And so when you're you know, developing the app within, uh, within Bluemix, it's really about what's the use case that you're looking to do within you know, the mobile extension, and then pulling in, you know, is it the mobile quality assurance? You know, what are the different services that you would pull from to use for that, for the different scenario? What are you doing to court the developer audience? I know at Pulse you had a parallel, you had a sort of a parallel developer right. conference. Right. Is that planned for future events? Or? It's, it's here, so we have Dev and Impact here. I mean, you'll see around the corner we've got the Oculus Rift kits, the Raspberry right. Pi, the, the sports hat going on. It's on more this. integrated at this point. Absolutely, conference. yeah. And because this is has traditionally had a larger developer you know, audience as, as part of this uh, um, of this show. And then on the fifth floor, we start in, I think right now, they kick off a track with uh, Angel Diaz from the open source community. So absolutely within the IBM conferences is expanding out to developers. But I'll tell you, we talked about you know, the scale and, and adoption that we've seen since Pulse. We launched you know, Bluemix on meetup.com where you can just have a, you know, a quick meeting to talk about Bluemix. We took it live a week and a half ago. We're in six countries, you know, a couple thousand people. We, last week, we uh, ran, you know, running a series of events called Bluemix Days. We originally had scheduled for 100 Bluemix Days. We're now at 200 and counting, so they were because sending me photos. Yeah, from India, we had 3,000 developers lined up trying to get in. So it's, uh, it's been absolutely incredible, the adoption and the pace that we're seeing you know, within the development community. And then we also launched the Bluemix Garage at this show, and that's really about being, not bringing startups to, uh, you know, to an IBM facility, but being true in their community. So living in the startup community, in the incubators, being there to mentor, ask questions, get them on Bluemix, um, and, and really be a team, you know, co you know, a team member with them. So, so all, you know, kind of the whole spectrum of the IBM specific events, embedding in the startups, and then enabling our you know, 80,000 developers across IBM to you know, reach out, have a meetup, and, uh, and start working closely with the community. A lot going on. Meg, we got a question yeah. from the Twitter sphere in the crowd chat. Uh, Tim Crawford asks, um, does Bluemix enable more nimble framework for organization and insights? And if so, how? Yes, yeah, so it's really about um, harnessing the data and the information for an organization. So, um, you know, we were, we were looking earlier at some of the apps here and how you do something simple like Twitter sentiment analysis. So let's say you've got the marketing team and they see Bluemix trending, we want to see what's going on. It's simple to build a custom mobile app. You can start seeing how, um, how the data and information is trending and that's transparent across your entire organization where you can quickly build the applications, you know, retool them to the kinds of insights and data that you need, and, uh, and so that's how we're really scaling across. What is the biggest thing you've learned on the developer outreach? I know when we talked at Pulse, it, winning the developer is what everyone's trying to do, right. um, and you really just can't win them. Nope. I mean, you got to earn it, yeah. right? I mean, you can't just, developers will smell you know, IBM's agenda or IBM-centric messaging. So, I mean, that's a big, that's come up a lot on theCUBE, you know, yeah. I, oh, that's IBM-centric. And then IBM's moving away from that IBM-centric, certainly with the folks like theCUBE here, right. us, uh, the crowd chat and, right. and the open um, power stuff's going on. And there's an open culture at IBM. So how, what have you learned and, and how are you winning? And where do you win with the developers? Yeah, and as you know, we talked about before, you, you don't win. 
right? It's it's a partnership, it's a relationship, it's a lot of the feedback. So within the beta, we're getting constant feedback on, you know, let's rename the service, let's retool how this works. And so it's really, you know, being in the GitHub communities, being in Stack Overflow, we have a whole dev to dev community where if you have a question in the product, you just post it on our dev to dev community and IBM developers are responding right away. So it's really about understanding and listening and then retooling the product and the outreach for the developer audience. And you know, even if it maybe conflicts with something that may be more IBM centric, right? And, uh, and just listening and making sure that we're, uh, you know, we're, we're constantly in tune with that audience. A lot of interest in using Watson uh, for, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for vertical applications. How is Watson uh, folded into the Bluemix? Yes. Yeah, so it's uh, it's really around you know pulling together you know big insights from a lot of data, right? So we saw on uh, on stage today when you start looking within the healthcare organizations, when you start looking in these different communities, you have this all this unstructured data, and so Watson is just absolutely brilliant at at pulling together and packaging that data. So we're working with the team on a lot of analytic services, you know Q and A services that it will start surfacing more through Blue Mix. And uh, so it's really been, you see the Watson Mobile Challenge, we've had hundreds of entries, and uh, if you go to the website, you'll see these companies and the kinds of applications that they're looking to build with the analytics and insight we get from Watson are really powerful. And, uh, and so it's a real close partnership between the Watson, mobile developer community, the, uh, the Blue Mix community to see how we can you know, harness some of the data and analytics into applications that the developers can use you know, to build mobile apps. Meg, talk about Amazon. You must get a lot of things. Well, I'm on Amazon. We were talking prior to our crowd chats on Amazon. Um, I'm going to try to poke at Blue Mix and see what's there. Um, and also OpenStack. We've got the OpenStack Summit yep, coming up this, this month. Um, a lot of developers there in platform as a service. Yep. So talk about Amazon and OpenStack and what are some of the objections or inhibitors or opportunities you get vis-a-vis -vis those two environments? Yeah, and, and you know, we're a partnership company, right? So it's, it's hard to talk about competition because we, we partner with so many uh, not, not communities. Not hard for us. <laughs> <laughs> but really, when you look at the ease of use, so as we talk with developers, we look at what are you using today? You know, even if they're competitive products, what are the goods, what are the bads, and how can we restructure Bluemix so that it takes the, the benefit of what you've seen in other you know, platforms and then harness that through Bluemix. So actually, a lot of the build packs that we see companies bring on to Bluemix are from competitors, and they're just seeing that we have an easier platform to work with. And then clearly OpenStack. I mean, we're committed to the open source community. We're built on Cloud Foundry. You know, huge partnership. Is with Cloud Pivotal. Foundry your horse in OpenStack, or is that, uh, you guys have your own specific initiatives going on there? It's a lot of tight partnership with the Cloud Foundry team and the Cloud Foundry initiative and the foundation that Angel Diaz leads from an open standards. As you heard from Doug yesterday yeah. on, you know, on the power side, I mean, IBM's 20 year history committed to open source. But you guys also have a conflict built into this because the Red Hat's been a big uh, part of the ecosystem mm -hmm. at OpenStack with Linux yeah. and your investment in Linux. In, um, OpenShift's getting a lot of traction. Yeah. So, how do they fit into the mix? Yeah, I think it plays back to what you <laughs> said about winning the developer community, right? There are, there are different use cases and different models and why developers are going to use different platforms. So it's our job to figure out you know, what is the strongest use case and you know, the way we can build ease of use and development and provide the strongest services, you know, IBM and partnerships out to the ecosystem so that you know, we're the platform that they, that they want to Will you to guys be at OpenStack? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so we're going to have theCUBE there, so we'll we, should, there. Uh, we should get, get some IBM folks on as well. Yeah. Just talking to one of your biggest partners, and he said there was some debate yesterday about whether yesterday's announcement was more about, uh, about the, um, uh, the exchange, about the marketplace, or about Bluemix. How are you differentiating those two or clarifying them to the market? It was really delivering IBM as a service, right? So, you know, Bluemix is a specific, you know, platform as a service development platform. And when you look at, you know, broader IBM across, you know, the line of business, across IT, across developers, there's a need to you know, consume IBM as a service, which is the overall marketplace. So they're absolutely in combination with each other. It's just based on what is your role in the organization, how are you going to engage with IBM, and then you know, are you going to engage through the marketplace, or are you a developer that engages through Bluemix? But if you look at the way they're designed, they all seamlessly tie together, and uh, so it's all one strategy. So is the idea that Bluemix is sort of a subset of the marketplace, and the services that you deliver through Bluemix will also be available uh, in the exactly, marketplace? Exactly, yeah, so it all works together, and we're the platform as a service, and then you have the overall marketplace. Meg, I wish we had more time. We'd love talking with you because Blue Mix is hot. It's uh, it's 
the shiny new toy within the portfolio. Steve Mills was pumping it hard yesterday. That's obviously developer focus. It's got a business tie-in. It's got all the things that gets our attention. So I'll give you the final word. Tell the folks out there, you know, the bumper sticker for Blue Mix, what's going on and uh, what to expect in the open, open source and open stack community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first thing, just go to bluemix.net and sign up. You'll be, we had a great post on Twitter yesterday. A developer said I logged in. A couple minutes later, I'm in, I'm using the services, a couple minutes, I'm building my app, so, um, so very easy platform to, uh, to log into. And, uh, and then if you're looking for uh, you know, a, a quick meetup on Bluemix to hear more, go to bluemix.meetup.com. You know, I'm going to be at the Facebook event uh, tomorrow for their developers, and they have the philosophy, uh, build, grow, and monetize. So you guys certainly can bring a lot of monetization muscle to developers <laughs> with the marketplace. So congratulations. Uh, we're here at theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break, live in Las Vegas for IBM Impact. This is theCUBE, John Furrier, Paul Gillen. We'll be right back.